did just what he said he would. He, he got away. Herb Selby. Convolution. I went into a cell. One of the few more details on this holdup of Glenn DeBona. He had a hidden gun. I don't even know where he was carrying it. He hit me on the temple with it. Shot the lock off the cell door and ran. Just wait till Dorothy May hears about this. He made good his boast. All right, we'll bring him back and fix him so he won't get away again. Roy, I talked to Eddie Robertson. What's wrong? Selby escaped. What about Eddie? Oh, well, he said Glenn paid off the mortgage the first thing this morning. Somebody around here is lying. Okay, we'll find out later. Where's Bullet? Over to Eureka. Let's get him and trail Selby. Selby's the man we want to see first. With unerring instinct, Bullet darts ahead of Roy, Dale, Jonah, and the sheriff, picking out Selby's trail. He's traveling in the direction of the hideout cabin. Selby must be returning there, intending to dig up the rest of his loot and flee the county. Roy urges Trigger on. Bullet! Here, fella! Come here, Bullet! What's the matter, Roy? I want Bullet close to us. Selby's gone to the hideout cabin to get the loot before he gets out of the territory. That's it, all right. Let's see if we can ride up quiet so he doesn't get scared and run away. must be inside the cabin. There's his horse. <laughs> quiet, boy. Quiet. Here. You better keep him undercover. This man's pretty handy with a gun. I'll watch myself. Oh, why are you saying that, Tin Star? Just because he slapped your head with a gun? Oh, sorry. Yeah, personal. I think you're giving too much credit to him and not enough to your big head. Jonah. It's hard not to hit that thing. Cut it. This is no time for wrangling. You two cover the sides of the cabin. I'll see if I can get up to the door. Quickly, but with caution, Roy moves toward the front door of the cabin while Jonah and the sheriff go to the sides. Roy is within ten feet of the door now. No cover is between himself and the cabin. He races across the ground, bending low, gun ready. He reaches the cabin, presses back hard against the wall. The door is to his right, a window to his left. He listens. There is no indication that anyone is inside. He reaches out with his boot, kicks the door open. Shots from inside. Roy ducks back against the wall. Don't try to come in, Rogers, or I'll kill you. Herb Selby. Roy edges over, points his gun through the doorway. Another shot from inside. Roy ducks back again. All right, Selby, if that's the way you want it. Roy turns quickly, pokes his gun through the window. Terror stricken, Selby runs. Roy! Roy! He's out the back window! Bullet! Bullet! There, fella, take him! Go get him! Enough. Take wow. it easy. Boy, Bullet wasn't fooling. Stand quiet now, boy. You got your cuffs, Sheriff? Right here. Oh, yeah, he always got his cuffs and things like that. Just he can't keep his big head from being bopped by a gun. I'll talk to you later, author. I'll make it the next time, Rogers. No need to come this way next time, Selby. The loot's all dug up. We'll just take it back with us now, eh, Roy? Yeah, well, you thought I was hitting out of the territory right away, didn't you? Well, I wasn't. Not until tomorrow. Now, this Glenn DeBona claimed I didn't hold him up last night, so... Well, I thought I'd get him tonight, but good. Selby, take a look at this. This the money you took from him? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Leather pouch and all. Fourteen hundred dollars. But he left Mitchell's ranch with a thousand seventeen. Sheriff, you haven't had a good look at this money yet, have you? I started to count it back at the office, but we were interrupted. Most of it's all right. But here's a couple hundred and tens, but... What do you think of these? No, I see why, this one is of the same series as the counterfeit that showed up at the bank. Well, the others are the same series, too. And this couldn't have been the money Glenn was carrying after all. Why not? Well, if it's counterfeit... Well, if it's counterfeit, there's a good chance Glenn's dealing bad money. Begging it in bread. Convolution. Sheriff, how about letting me borrow your prisoner for the evening? Shall we? Yeah, he may be able to help us get evidence on some counterfeiters. That is, providing you still want to do that one last job, Selby. Anytime, Rogers. Nobody is going to claim I didn't rob them when I did. You'll have to take the responsibility for this, Roy, and I won't know anything about it. Well, that suits us. Selby, we'll stay here until dark. If, uh, if you try anything between now and then, 
You're just another prisoner who tried to escape, understand? He's in the bakery, all right. Here's a gun, Selby. But let me warn you, it's empty, and ours aren't. We're staying right out here behind you. All right. Now, look, Rogers, we've been I just want to make sure you understand. All I want is to take the guy that won't admit I took him. It's a matter of pride with me. Go ahead. But remember, your gun's empty, and we're right behind you. The hold-up man enters the dimly lit bakery. Walks toward the wooden counter between the two glass showcases. Then DeBona glances up. His face grows pale. The hold-up man shows his gun. Uh, I thought you... Uh, I want that money. But you... You said I didn't take it last night. So I'm taking it now. Well, there's not much here. Get your hands out of there. I want the big stack. The big stack and all of it. Now, quick or I'll let this talk. Just a minute. Be careful what you pick up. Uh, what you want is in this box... It's money. All right. Bring it over. Here. Take the cover off and let's see. Okay. Look. All right, Selby. Raise your hands. We got you. Don't move. You only think you've got me. Keep your guns on him, Dale and Jonah. I'll have to take this box of money. No. We'll need it as evidence. Keep your hands off that money. Glenn grabs the box of money with one hand, striking out at Roy with the other. Roy steps back, holstering his gun. Glenn comes at him. Roy swings. Glenn is hit, but unhurt. Roy swings again. Then again. Glenn lands a hard blow to Roy's stomach. And Roy retaliates with a drive to Glenn's jaw. Glenn goes down. Keep Selby covered for another minute, Dale and Jonah. I want to have a look at this money in this box. Howdy, pards. Things sure have been jumping at the ranch. And that's just when a feller needs a good supply of energy most. So take an old hand's advice. Tomorrow when you roll out of your bunk, corral yourself a bowl full of that great energy-giving cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Why, two minutes after you polish off a bowl full of Grape Nuts Flakes, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. And you get it from Grape Nuts Flakes because their two-minute energy has been tested and proved. And you go for Grape Nuts Flakes Sugar Roasted Flavor. It's plum delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package, you hear? For two-minute energy, what'll we eat? Grape Nuts Flakes, oh boy, they're a treat. Yes, they're two-minute energy, has what it takes. So rise and shine with Grape Nuts Flakes. Selby hasn't a chance in the world of escaping, Roy, and he'll stay that way from now on. Unless your big head gets in his way again. All right. Glenn, let's hear your explanation of how counterfeit money came to be in the box you were given to the hold-up man. And you may as well tell the truth. We know you were distributing it at the bakery. In 20-cent loaves of bread. Hmm. I thought I was rich for a minute. Where were you printing it? At the bakery? No. I didn't know anything about counterfeit until I went out to Jim Mitchell's place to work. I stumbled on the plates out there one day. I made him take me in as a partner. He prints it then. And you sell it to the boys who make a specialty of passing bad money, is that it? Mm, pretty much. Okay. I'll give you a pad of paper and a pencil. While you're not doing anything in your cell, I want you to write out a list of every man you sold the stuff to and where we can find him. Yes. You going out to pick up Jim Mitchell, Sheriff? Right away. Drop over to the cafe on your way back. We'll have a little supper tonight. Uh, I will if I have time, Roy. I'm uh, not sure. If you do have time, we'll, we'll be there anyway. Sure a good meal, Dale. Say, where's Jonah? Still answering his phone call, I guess. No, here he comes. Must be bad news the way he looks. Hey, what's the matter, Jonah? Yeah, yeah, no, nothing. Well, <clears throat> you about ready to go back to ranch? Yeah, but I thought you were going to call on Dorothy May tonight. Yeah, well, I was, but <clears throat> now I, <clears throat> and boy, I don't know. 
That phone call was from somebody that said she was a friend of Dorothy May's, and she told me that Dorothy May was indisposed, so would I please not come over tonight? Uh-oh. Yes, uh-oh. I see what you mean. Say, the same thing happened to the sheriff last night, if I remember right. Uh-huh. Oh, what are you going to do about it? Well, I can't make up my mind, Roy. If somebody's a playing a joke on me and I don't go over, and Dorothy May has to sit there all evening alone watching the clock and tapping her foot, war. And on the other hand, if the phone call ain't a joke and I go barging in and she is indisposed, war. The frying pan on the fire. Yeah, yeah, it's times like this a man don't know his own mind. Say, he don't know his own mind. Whichever way I turn, I'm a heel. <laughs> uh, hey, look out the window passing by. Eh? Yeah? The sheriff. Hmm, a dozen roses and a box of candy. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, that... Wait, uh, that polecat's got his face all shined up. And heading straight that, towards Dorothy May's house. I'll salivate him. I'll salivate that chucklehead. That yes, sir, it looks as though we'll have a mighty interesting evening. Turn about sort of fair play at that, isn't it, Dale? What you got a cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? Hey, sweet baby, don't you think maybe we could find a brand new recipe? I've got a hot rod Ford and a two dollar bill. I know a spot right over the hill where the soda pop and the dancing's free. If you want to have fun, come along with me. Hey, good looking, what you got a cooking? How's about cooking something up with me? I'll keep it till it's covered with age I'm gonna write your name down on every page Hey, good looking What you got cooking How's about cooking something up with me How's about cooking something up with me That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials Each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed. Directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Paul Zarimba, Herb Litton, Janet Warren, and Ralph Moody. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you until